Okay, a disappointing weekend for Offaly, who had a chance to get into the, the 2A final, and of course, um, the idea then would be get promotion, but um, against an Offaly, or against an Antrim team, that kind of the result didn't matter to them either way, because they knew they were into the league final. It was all about Offaly, could they get the job done and make sure that um, that Kerry wouldn't get through. I'm joined by uh, Offaly journalist Joe Troy to talk about it. You were there, two late goals for, for, Off, or for Antrim to level the game. What was that like? Because you would have thought two goals up, just <laughs> make sure you don't concede two goals and you're true. What happened? Yeah, well, it's, it's very strange. First of all, Shane, you know, we call it during commentary, awfully look, you know, so comfortable for large parts, you know, defensively, very, very sound or excellent. You know, they only conceded two points from play along with the late two goals. So apart from the brilliance from freeze of Neil McManus, you know, awfully well in control of the game. Discipline was an issue. Michael Fenley alluded to it after in terms of, of the fouls being given away. And that's probably been a recurring theme in your podcast review and awfully hard in the last couple of years is, you know, the lack of discipline because the bulk of the scores yesterday with away were freeze, which was disappointing. But, you know, six minutes into additional time, which no one could fathom where the six minutes came from, was difficult to work with. The additional two after that, now there's brief stoppages in that, but it should have never had six to begin with. But look, we can blame the referee, which we probably had issues with yesterday in terms of timekeeping. There was two minutes of additional time signaled in the first half. Only one was played. Um, I think a minute and six seconds, which is very, very strange. Uh, the goals themselves looked reasonably schooled by errors. The ball shouldn't be hitting the square at senior inter-county level and leading to a goal mode scramble. So that was the disappointing thing. But I did say during commentary to Sean Ryan, Baron and Miracle, you know, awfully are going to be in the final next week. And then in a matter of 90 seconds, our year has turned on its head. Do you feel that like this is one of those things whereby it compromises everything that Michael Fenley is trying to do in the first year? Or is it all about the Christie ring and it always was about the Christie ring? Because if you think about it in some ways, if Offaly get promoted up to Division 1 for next year, we saw how it went for Carlo, minus 70 points, lost every game, Westmead did a little bit better and also retained their status. In some ways, is it all about the Christie ring? And then next year, if you get promoted back up to, to 1A, then maybe those are the incremental steps that might work, work better. Or is that kind of the wrong attitude? Yeah, well, possibly the steps would work better. That You know, you consolidate your position and build more young fellas this year. But I think the real asset test was the league. Like, with all due respect, Shane, to the Christie ring teams, I would genuinely believe four or five of the well-drilled senior A club teams in Offaly would win that Christie ring. I know it's a bold statement to make, but I do think a fully tuned in to Karma Kalahi, St. Rhinus, Kuleri under the, you know, a couple of those teams I genuinely think would beat what we've seen of Mayo and Wicklow in, in this league. I think the league was the acid test because you're playing two Joe McDonough teams. Ultimately, we got 1.04 games, which proves we haven't been good enough to come up. Um, we probably should have won both games. The Kerry game was in our hands. We uh, had a, a red card after six minutes of the second half, which turned the game on its head. And yesterday, I thought we were brilliant. I thought we had made a lot of forward steps. We had a good spread of scores. I thought defensively, uh, we were very, very sound. Um, they showed a lot of heart. Um, I'd say Michael Fenley has probably been frustrated over the league. You know, yesterday, he started without Ben Keneally, who was so effective when he came in, without Keelan Kiley, uh, without Ushin Kelly, and obviously the long-term injury to Shane Dooley, which are four your marquee guaranteed starters and still should have got the game. Like The timekeeping was a huge issue yesterday. It's probably an entirely different debate, but I do think the first real acid test we failed. Um, I would have expected at least um, a league final appearance. I think the Christie ring is a formality, and I know it's a dangerous uh, concept to say that, but I do genuinely believe with the players at his disposal and with the quality of opposition we're playing that Offaly should be walking through that Christie ring fairly unassisted. I, I had a quick word with Pat Nolan uh, of the Mirror, who's obviously an Offaly man, after the game yesterday. Now, he wasn't there, but... He was followed on Twitter and like as you've explained there, there was the late collapse and he said that in both codes at all age grades there seems to be this problem with like seeing out games. Whereas in the past Offaly were noted for, you know, those late shows and of course that famous five minute final is the thing that'll obviously come to mind. But like is there a sort of a is there a problem endemic within within Offaly at the moment with that? I'd say Shane, you know, looking into it as a whole, belief has to be a huge issue because the fact that this group of players have suffered, you know, successive relegations in, in the league and championship has to hurt, has to weigh on their mind. They're playing with a lot of pressure. You know, I would talk to a lot of awfully uh, genuine supporters the last couple of days, as you would every weekend coming into a match. Like, people are genuinely concerned for where awfully are. 
most people would have said that Antrim were favourites going in yesterday if they travelled with a strong team, which they did. Um, I was I was talk, talking to Ryan Whelan yesterday morning. He was genuinely worried that are we gone to the stage where we're now worrying that will Antrim send a second string team that we can get result to get us into the league final, which is a worry. So belief, not only with the players, but in the general hurling public is a huge issue. And that has to feed back into the underage. But there is some green shoots there. You know, from under 17 down, awfully are more than capable of mixing it with a lot of the teams that are at their grade and maybe a small bit ahead of senior level. But it will take time to change that belief system. If you get, it's like any walk of life, if you get, if you stay getting told you're not good enough, you'll eventually start to believe it. And that awfully players have gone through a lot of hurt. So it probably does feed down into the, the system of belief that can we close out these matches? Because at the minute, the answer is no. Now, yesterday was a freak result, in my opinion. Um, and there's a lot of fallout from it because you know, the referee probably will have to account for his timekeeping, which and it's not, I'm not going to go and blame him. There's still the goals were schooled by errors. But at that late stage in the game, beyond that at time, it, it was a hard pill to swallow because the players that are in there, it's a small panel, but it is committed. Can you Can you sort of give an idea of how Michael Fenley has done so far. Of course, you know, we know he had that run with Bally Hale one day All-Ireland again. Johnny Kelly, um, who I actually bumped into in the Gaelic grounds on Saturday night, he was manager of Burris Lee, got them to the All-Ireland final. So, you know, we're not talking about novices here. We're not talking about lads who don't know what it takes. How have they done in the first, I suppose it's give or take five months of, the, of their job? Yeah, well, look, I spoke to Michael yesterday. He said, if you, if you put it down to base statistics, after you've played nine competitive games, won seven, drew one, and lost one in Kerry, a game we probably should have managed better. Uh, we should have probably handled the sending off better. We should have probably handled our substitutions better. But, you know, seven wins out of nine. But again, you take that with a pinch of salt because realistically, seven games that Offaly should be winning with their eyes closed and probably should have won the other two. But Michael Verney put it down in, in, in base stats yesterday. The two games that are already asked the test with Joe McDonough teams, we've got one point out of four. Now, I think Michael Fenley is still instilling a lot of belief and discipline into the panel. I think we can be maybe a small bit lax in terms of preparation and, and availability to wear the jersey because it's a double-edged sword. A county like Offaly now, the glamour isn't there of being associated with being an inter-county hurler. So then do you apply yourself to be an inter-county hurler to the same standards the teams above you would? And that's a big issue probably going forward. Yes, there is probably players in Offaly that are good enough to be on that panel. They've decided not to commit. What can you do there? A manager can't force on him to win. So Offaly probably could be served with better personnel on the panel to give the team a lift that's already there. But again, the glamour is probably gone with being an inter-county hurler in Offaly that a lot of players have decided they don't want to be a part of that. And a couple of years ago, um, I remember against Galway, the Leinster Championship, operating with two sweepers. Then the next man came in and, and moved away from that. What way is Michael Fenley actually setting up this team? You could see his imprint on it the last couple of games. They seem to be trying to to win the ball, play a support runner, breaking from deep, you know, getting a couple of long range scores, working the ball in. We aren't seeming to create that overlap in the forward unit at the minute. We've a very few shots on goal, actual raising green flags. We had a couple of chances in the Kyo Cup, but would, look, four goals against um, Wicklow and another three or four against Mayo doesn't you know, boost your statistics. Yesterday, we didn't have a shot in anger at the goals. Uh, very similar down in Kerry. We're not troubling the goalkeeper. But you can see he's trying to keep a possession-based game. I thought we maybe were over-exuberant on the short puck out yesterday. The ball wasn't stick in the hand. The delivery wasn't great at times from the goal. But I do think he looks to be supporting the runner coming from deep. But that takes time. When you're going from being so defensive-minded to try and imprint an attacking game, minus some of your, your better attackers, it's going to be hard. But you can see a lot of positives he's brought. Defensively, he seems to be uh, reasonably sound. There's been a lot of turnover players. He's got to see a lot of players. But again, it's a change from, as you said, hurl at a higher level with double sweepers, with maybe always having one man withdrawn, the kind of attack on the front foot with confidence. It's been something that Offaly have probably found it hard to adjust at the minute. And if you were to just, and I know you, you definitely did touch on it already, but could you just list out the sort of quality players that were missing for that game? Because Ben Keneally, uh, Keelan Kiley and uh, Shane Dooley, if I'm correct as well. Yeah, and like, you know, Shane is a long-term injury. I spoke to Shane after the match yesterday. He's always there. You know, he's always floating around. And the thing about Shane is he's so hungry to be involved um, with Offaly. Shane could have rode off into the sunset a year or two ago. He's Offaly's all-time top scorer in championship. But the fact that he still wants to get back is a measure of the man that he doesn't associate the non-glamour of hurling the Chris Ring that it's above or below him. Like, Shane Dooley is desperately mad to get back and help that cause. And I, I wouldn't bet against Shane Dooley. He wanted to be there again next year. 
like if Shane Dooley is available for any of them matches, Offaly win. He's an absolute score getter. There's no one in Offaly who scored more than him. There's only, I think, seven or eight lads in the history of hurling in this country who scored more than him, which is amazing considering he's been lining out with Offaly for so long. So you have him, Oshin Kelly, probably our Mara Keith Hallis man forward at the minute. He came on with in injury time with a broken finger. Then Keneally went off against uh, Mayo with a troubled collarbone came on yesterday and was so effective, like such a class act and he sets awfully up on the front foot defensively attacking and Keelan Kiley, you know, we all know Keelan has his, his issues with discipline. Um, I think he was somewhat harsh, he maybe sent off against Kerry but he has to know better. I know Keelan is game inside out but he is still leader material. You know, against Mayo he was the dominant force on the field. Against Kerry Lash in relegation match he was the dominant awfully player for large parts. So that's four guaranteed starters uh, aided by, you know, Tommy Garrity who is so effective from running from deep, getting scores from the middle of the field. He was out injured as well yesterday. So that's five players from my mind in the Christie ring or any championship match off if they are five starters. And in a county with a pool like ours, you can't be four to be down five regulars, let alone five your marquee men. And another man who I would see as the heartbeat of the team, and he's been out for a couple of weeks injured, is Shane Kinsler, because he brings you a robustness. He's versatile. He chips in with three or four points a game. He wins your freeze. And you know one of these players, a kind of a Bonner-esque, um, Bonner-Matter-esque player that lifts those around you. You know, when, when you are in for all the world, in the muck and, 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 and the muddy waters, it's a player that stands up and looks back at you and gives you that eye and say, lads, I need you to step up here. Shane Kinsa out of that forward unit is, it's a mammoth hole left there at the minute. Do you think that, like, if we can even jump ahead to the summer and then again next year, because, like, to be fair, Offaly should win this Chris Ewing Cup. Are the, are the public getting behind Michael Fenley? Are they, do they see what he's trying to do and understand that this wasn't going to happen overnight? Because, I mean, there are obviously going to be a lot of people that think, right, boom, you have to win 2A, you have to win the Christie ring, do it with style and bring Offaly back to where they should be. Yeah, and like it's a double edged sword because the genuine hurling fraternity in Offaly, and it is a small, you know, public, it's a small county, would know and appreciate where the horror's at, that this is the level they're at. And they've kind of accepted that, that it's going to take a long-term rebuilding plan. Do you know that Michael Lygnan and, and these guys have, have put in and, and tried to instill in this new county board and, and in terms of coaching and stuff, everyone knows it's going to take time. We still have a lot of awfully people rooted in the past that are saying, you know, you have to remember now, 98 is, is 22 years ago. So you're talking a generation and a half ago since we've seen success. So the realistic people will know that off you're so far from the top table in terms of even dining at it, let alone eating at the top table, that they know it's going to be a rebuilding process. But people in Offaly don't have patience for that. They want success. They want to see themselves. It's a hurling snobbery, if you if, if you must, that, yes, we're above Antrim, we're above Wicklow, we're above Carlo, Mead, Leash. Like, Leash have pulled streets clear of us ahead at the minute. Like, Leash have had a firm progression plan with their underage for the last few years. And Leash aren't dining at Offaly's table. Leash are a far superior outfit at the minute. So, like, Offaly will have to do a lot um, of soul searching, a lot of realism, which is the big thing. And I do think there is a genuine grow from Michael Fenley. The manager team he has is excellent. Um, the feedback from the players, and you'd often hear in a small county whether things are good, bad, or different. I've yet to hear a negative story out of Michael Fenley's camp from those that are committed to it. So, that's a good sign. And at the end of the day, uh, Shane, they're the people that matter. The people that are in listen to him four nights a week. They're the people that matter. Everyone else outside of that, you know, white noise, you have to choose to ignore the times. And the final question then, you, you probably don't even care, uh, but uh, you've seen Antrim and Kerry this year. Uh, Antrim d- did put out a strong enough, to, well, they put out pretty much a full strength team against uh, Offaly Essay under Darren Gleeson. Who would you fancy to win that um, the 2A final? Antrim. Um, Kerry are a fine side. You know, they rely heavily on the likes of the two Conways and the two Boyles um, for the real stand-up moments. But I think Al Antrim, we beat them in the Kyoko Cup final this year. Probably lucky to do so. In the last couple of minutes, physically Antrim can match most teams. You know, McManus will able to hand himself. Big Donald Lugin's a handful. You know, Keelan Malai is a brilliant, brilliant midfielder. You know, he comes up with three, four, five points from play in these games. They're very well organised. And Darren Gleeson has brought maybe a style to them. And coming up from Tipperary, you know, um, it's it's a massive fill up in the cap because they associate this glamour and novelty and wanting to hurl for one of the county's hurling royalty. You know, I do think Antrim physically they can they can match Kerry um, with no little skill. I would wouldn't write off Kerry's chance to win it, but I do think Antrim are a fine side. Um, I think hurling is re-energised up there as well. And look, Antrim are one of the proudest hurling counties up there. They strive so well in the club games, keep it going. And look, Bardak Yoke Cup final, Antrim have gone undefeated this year. They've beat Kerry when they needed to beat Kerry. And I look, I fancied our lads having a right quote at Antrim next week. We were well set up for that. 
that's why we left so disillusioned. But I think Kerry will come. They're well organised by Fintan O'Connor and Brendan Cummins. Um, adds a lot of steel there and creativity to them as well. But I think this Antrim team are, are slowly moving up that ladder, and they're probably, unfortunately. They're seeing me pulling even a bit ahead of Offaly, which is the disappointing thing, but I do expect Antrim to be playing their trade and 1B next year. Well, very good analysis, Joe. Appreciate you joining me. Uh, I'm sure we'll chat again soon. No problem, Shane. Take care.